So I don't know how many of you remember, it was a, a really big day in my life, but it may not have been in your life. Uh, about a month ago, I, I did a breakdown of Rick Scott's 11 point plan to save America. And this was it was notable because it, it sort of seemed like in a sea of cultural issues and talking points that make no sense. A Republican was actually putting together a policy proposal, and this is the Republican Florida Senator Rick Scott. So we looked at it. The proposal was absolutely absurd. It, incredibly, uh, if if Rick Scott got his way, the policies he proposes would be incredibly damaging to the country. A lot of them weren't even really policies. They were just, again, cultural issues masked as policy. But we reviewed it because it was actually something apparently substantive from Republicans, and it was a crazy and dis disastrous proposal. Rick Scott went on Fox News and on Fox News, reporter John Roberts calls out Rick Scott for some of the things in his plan. And it's not, you know, that John Roberts is the be all end all of journalism or whatever. But here he did a good job of saying, here's stuff that's in your proposal. Rick Scott tries to call them Democratic talking points. And John Roberts is like, no, no, no. It's straight out of your proposal. And it is. And Rick Scott doesn't know what way, you know, what, what is up, what is down. It doesn't make any sense. This is how flaccid these proposals are, where as soon as they are questioned about them, they say, well, those are just Democratic spin. No, it's in your proposal. Check this out. Because Putin's such a thug, a murderous thug. All right, uh, let's switch to politics now because there's a lot that we've got to look forward to between now and November the 8th. You recently put out an 11 point plan to rescue America. Right. Two of the big points of which are, quote, all Americans should pay some income tax to have skin in the game, even if a small amount. Currently, over half of Americans pay no income tax. It also says all federal legislation sunsets in five years. If a law is worth keeping, Congress can pass it again. So that would raise taxes on half of Americans and potentially sunset programs like Medicare, Medicaid and Social Security. Why would you propose something like that in an election year? Sure. Well, John, that's, of course, the Democrat talking points. It's a no, no, it's plan. in the plan. <laughs> it's in well, the plan. But here's, here, but here's the thing about reality for a second. It's First of all, let's talk but, about but, Medicare. But Senator, but Senator hang on. John. And, so it's not a Democratic talking point. It's in the plan. And also in the plan. OK, so now notice how he first said it's it's a lie. And then when he can't say anything other than, well, yeah, it is in the plan, he says, well, there's also other things in the plan. Now, what John Roberts is saying is is true. Um, when Rick Scott says everyone should pay at least some federal income tax, you have to remember there are lots of people that end up paying no federal income tax because between a low income and the standard deduction and child tax credits and whatever, you end up paying zero federal income tax. Now, we have to remember that these folks pay a lot of other taxes. They pay sales taxes. They pay uh, excise taxes if they have a vehicle. They have car registration fees. They may pay state taxes. It's not that they don't pay taxes. This is a popular right wing talking point to say the rich are paying so much and half the country pays no taxes. Well, OK, you, you, you're entitled to child tax credits and the standard deduction, et cetera. But it is part of their talking point as to why the tax system needs to be changed. Rick Scott is then confronted. Well, that is going to increase taxes for half of Americans per your own favorite talking points. And Rick, Rick Scott says, well, that's that's Democratic propaganda. No, it's actually in your plan. Then he switches to, well, here's other stuff that's also in my plan says we ought to every year talk about exactly how we're going to fix Medicare and Social Security. Here's what's happening. No one that I know of wants to sunset uh, Medicare or Social Security. But what we're doing is we don't even talk about it. Medicare goes bankrupt in four years. Social Security goes bankrupt in 12 years. I think we are. Remember that they've been using these bankruptcy talking points for a long time, and they're, they're all completely untrue to figure out how we preserve those programs. Every program that we care about, we ought to stay, stop and take the time to preserve those programs. Now, understand what he's saying here. He claims I don't want to get rid of Social Security and Medicare. No, I don't want to do that. But 
I do want us to debate whether to keep them on a regular basis. So let's rephrase what he's saying. He's saying I want it to be on the table that we might gut or eliminate Social Security and or Medicare, that he, he wants that possibility, at least. I, I mean, I just fought the postal bill because it put more responsibility on Medicare and took it off the postal service and put mm -hmm. Medicare in a worse position. Now, let's go back. Let's talk about taxes for a second. I'll put my record up against anybody on tax cuts. I tax I cut taxes and fees 100 times as governor. But he now understand that that's such a meaning. I, I don't even want to waste time on this, but this is how politicians lie, where he goes, well, listen, when I was governor, I cut taxes and fees 100 times. You guys understand that that can mean, OK, um, he's cutting the vehicle uh, registration fee from 50 to 45 dollars. That's one cut. He is changing the uh, excise tax rate from 1.05 percent to 1.03 percent. That's a second cut. The, these are sort of meaningless statements, and politicians are so good at just offhandedly mentioning them. Here's what's unfair. Mm -hmm. We have people that don't that could go to work and have figured out how to have government pay their way. That's not right. So that's actually what this is about. That's actually what this it's about. It's about cutting welfare and all sorts of different programs. So understand that the Republican the, there's some people who say, oh, Republicans want to kill Americans by putting people in genocide camps or whatever. And then some Republicans say it's Democrats who want to put people in genocidal concentration camps or whatever. No, 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 no. The, the way it works is Republicans want to slowly chip away at programs that enable people to live in a dignified way and take away the ability of folks to afford unexpected, costly events or just the cost of being alive. And uh, this is the way they do it. Listen, we we should look at whether Medicare really makes sense to keep. We should justify whether Social Security should keep going. We should look at food stamps. We should make sure that everybody's paying some federal tax, which means the poor make the poor pay more in taxes. That's how you do it. It's not, you know, these these 1984-esque uh, FEMA camps or whatever else. It's it's these little, little cuts to take away people's dignity. And um, so I don't know how much the Fox audience realizes the dishonesty and the absurd nature of what Rick Scott is proposing and his complete inability to defend it here. Um, but the best way to dismantle all of these so-called plans is you go line by line and explain to them this is what it would do. How do you justify it? Half the time they'll say that's not really what's in my plan. And then you go, no, it is. Here it is. And then the other half, they'll just explain it away with very uh, transparently bogus talking points.